Are we recording? Holy shit, you should have said that. Anyway, guys, hello, welcome. I'm Angelo Wrestling, and I'm here to tell you what happened on Raw. This sounded so fake, but in reality, it's true. I'm gonna tell you what happened on Raw, and what I liked, and what I didn't like. Holy shit, I sound so fake today. I cannot believe that. Anyway, we opened the show with Edge and Bad Phoenix, and... I'm so good, man, I'm so good. <laughs> I saw it from my way. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know what is happening today. At Extreme Rose, we were having that scene that Rhea broke the skull of Beth. That n never happened in reality. Back there and then I said that we're gonna have a match. Someone from the Judgment Day plus Rhea versus Beth and Edge. We're gonna have that at the Elimination Chamber, Finn and Rhea versus Edge and Beth, and finally, please, for the love of all, end this storyline, because it's getting exhausting. Not that I'm not invested, not that it's not interesting, but it's exhausting. It's just one more match after that, and it's gonna be total failure. Please, don't, don't continue, don't, don't, don't. Anyway, that full segment led to the match which was qualifying match for the elimination, Angelo Dawkins versus Damian Priest. The match itself was a great match, but the best moment from Raw is right here and now. I don't know why, but I'm pretty sure that at the end of 2023, Montez Ford will be at 80% of the best moments. But I just. The match itself about Damian Priest and Angelo Dawkins. I low key wanted Dawkins to win because there there have been rumors around that Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins is gonna, are gonna split and kind of this match is splitting them. Yeah, but anyway, I, I'm not about it. Angelo Dawkins had a great performance. Damian Priest had a great performance. He's going to the chamber. We're having Baron Corbin versus Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis won and JBL trashed. Corbin dumped him. I guess there is a greater story behind all of this, but uh, why we invested like so many months into that storyline when JBL is gonna be disappointed by the fifth loss of Corbin kind of makes no sense. Do, do, do you guys get me? Am I alone on this? But Baron Corbin was losing way before JBL and if JBL was about losing, uh, was getting upset about losing, he should have seen that coming before he took Corbin under his wing. You could have seen that he's not winning a match ever. He's just a heel that you're not supposed to like ever. So that's why he's... I just... I was seeing that from a mile away, JBL. But anyway, JBL is gone. Oh, thank God. Probably WWE heard me that I hit JBL and they couldn't stand it. And they were like, oh, JBL, go. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, we had Brock Lesnar promo, which was great. <laughs> Oh, I, ah, I love Cowboy Brock. I just love him. I love him so much. He was at the ring and he was like, okay, we had few interactions with Bobby Lashley, but the last one, he'd throw me out of the top rope in the rumble. So from then, I can't stop thinking about Bobby who? Bobby Lashley. <laughs> Basically, I go hunting and I think about Bobby Lashley. I go uh, ice fishing and I think about Bobby Lashley. I go do something else and I think about Bobby Lashley. I go to bed with my wife and three, four hours later I think about Bobby Lashley. <laughs> and after that he was like, uh, I, I can stop thinking about him so I have a resolution at the Elimination Chamber, me and him one on one. Bobby Lashley came out and uh, basically Brock f 5 him two times and now we're gonna have the, this match at the Elimination Chamber. Fatal 4-way for a spot at the Women's Elimination Chamber match, which was between the returning Carmella, Piper Niven, Candice and Michin. And I'm really happy, I'm glad that the returning Carmella won. won. I'm not a fan of Carmella, but I think she deserved it. Uh, she is a top star in the roster, I feel like with her winning, you you can see, you can see the Elimination Chamber 
and you can see who's gonna win. That's Asuka. And you can see my point later that night when she's having a match against Chelsea Green because symbolically Asuka was in the ring with Chelsea. Even without Chelsea, even when the match was over, Asuka was in the middle of the ring and every other contender from the Elimination Chamber was outside of the ring. And I think this this big volumes and it was symbolic how, how it's gonna be. Alpha Academy versus Shelton and... I was about to say Shelton and Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. Honestly, when you put these two teams together, you kind of can skip that match because these two teams don't have a lot of leverage to them. But I was looking forward to that match, to be honest with you, because uh, we are seeing for weeks now that something is cooking between Cedric and Alexander. I said Shelton and Benjamin and I'm saying Cedric and Alexander now. <sighs> Between Cedric and Benjamin, it's not like in the past, because in the past it was not really interesting for me, but right now it's different and I really liked the performance of both teams, and especially of Cedric and his finisher. I'm really happy that they didn't lose, in fact they won, and I'm looking forward to see what's gonna happen, what's cooking, because in a backstage interview they're saying that MVP is just their friend not like in the past, which is kind of strange, but we're gonna see what's gonna happen. We saw like one of the most emotional promos I have ever seen since watching wrestling. It was between Paul Heyman and Cody Rhodes. It was basically trying to hype up the match between Roman and Cody for Elimination Chamber. They both were crying and it was so heartbreaking and beautiful and so true and relatable. Not relatable, but it was just a great promo and everything ended with uh, how uh, Dusty Rhodes have actually trained Roman Reigns, but he never trained Cody. And on the last conversation between Paul and Dusty, Dusty told Paul that Cody is his favorite son, but Roman was the son he actually would always wanted, but he never had. And Cody got triggered, and everything got personal, and now I'm excited to see that match, actually. Another match for Elimination Chamber, the last match, in fact, Montez Ford versus Elias. Mont Montez Ford won, we, we, could, we could see that from a mile away. Uh, actually, it's... a uh, couple months in the kitchen, in the in the oven, whatever you want to call it. Sorry Elias, but I feel like Elias is gonna get an opportunity down the line, but right now it's Montes Ford time, and I'm actually really curious what's gonna happen in chamber with Ford. Last but not least, Becky versus Bailey Steel cage match. Finally you got that match. I was a little bit underwhelmed by the length of the match. It was only 10 minutes. We had only 10 minutes left. I uh, was thinking that some shenanigans is gonna happen. Shenanigans was about to happen when you Shirai started climbing the cage to stop Becky. But at the end, Lita came out and she helped Becky win. So Becky and Bailey there, even now. Good. Good. Actually, guys, to be fair with you, I was sleeping until now. Now it's 11 p.m. Uh, and I have like two three hours to edit this video and upload it. Yeah, yeah Thank you for reminding me by the way. Thank you. You can see the next video here. That was me Angelo Petkov aka Angelo Wrestling. You can like subscribe share whatever you want to do You can go see the previous video. I'm gonna see you very very soon Very 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 soon Huh